this right here is probably an indispensable tool of the 21st century that almost everybody who owns a smartphone or any type of electronic devices have and it's a power bank where you can output 65 watts super max series it would be really cool that I have a laptop and i can charge it up so that i can power it up on the go without having to bring a wall adapter because you may not know when there will be always be a plug at the back side we have big parameters here if you want i can pause this this is just a simple typical illustration you can see that you can charge a macbook and a phone twice either way because there's only one type c port and two different usb color port okay you may want to see a power bank rather than boxed right let me introduce you the titan and this go oh my gosh this is a heavy power bank this is the included type c cable that's very generous thank you most of the power banks nowadays, including the power bank that I reviewed two years ago, doesn't really come with a cable. But actually, when I measure the the mass of the power bank, it's just 379 grams. So I'm not sure about the manufacturer, or maybe my weighing scale is wrong. Wow, it's heavy, and it's just nothing. There's no USB cable. Um, and the instruction manual. So this is pretty good of use. This is the power bank that weighs more than half a kilo. That's quite heavy, right? In my previous video, I've mentioned that volumetric and gravimetric energy density divide your battery capacity by the mass it goes to 18.5 divided by 0 0.078 gives you 244 hour per kilogram capacity of the battery uh, divided by the weight which in this case is 0.636 kilogram and it's around 174 watt hours per kilogram or 175 so it's quite a huge amount of energy stored in this size and is it really 30,000 mAh? This is a 10,000 mAh battery as you can see and it seems like it could be plausible that it's made out of three identical lithium polymer cells each 10,000 mAh packed in parallel and it's come with a percentage of 68% which is pretty much the ideal voltage to store the battery around 3.8 volts or around 68 percent and the rated capacity is 18,000 milliampere hour at 15 watts it includes the conversion loss which they took to be the bare minimum of such power banks nowadays in the back of it it says you can charge a macbook with it oh interesting but i don't really have a macbook the first contestant we would use is a laptop right here the lenovo ideapad 5 pro okay after reading the laptop instruction manual i realized that you can either charge it up with the 135 watt slim fit or the type c which makes it pretty good or well, since you just have to connect the type c port okay plug it in always plug the laptop in before plugging the power bank oops well, the indicator turns on. It says PD. Fingers crossed we realize that hey, it's actually charging. There's a Thunderbolt sign here. It's charging at a power of around 40 watts. Maybe the power goes up. I don't know. Around there, the powering is actually quite good. Okay, so I just paste some stickers here so we have to mine it. And you can see that the power bank is at 19%. So what I have to do is to fully charge the power bank. And I'm going to show you the capacity my agenda for tomorrow i just have to charge up this power bank from 19 percent to 100 percent using this dell charger which can do 65 watts monitor the temperature of the power bank and i'm gonna draw a spreadsheet then step two is to fully discharge this computer now we are already at around 36 percent as you can see Next, we are going to go to Lenovo Vantage and we are going to see the battery capacity which we can go to by going power, battery details and you can see that the full charge capacity is 75.88 watt hour so we are going to use this as our reference R Okay, so the third step is to just basically when this one is at 
very low percentage like maybe two percent there what i have to do is to just use this cable just directly plug it in and i'm gonna use my thermometer to measure the temperature of the power bank as the laptop charges up so yeah we'll see you there soon in the meantime i've created a mini table left column describes the power bank's characteristics and the change in the temperature during the charging and discharging process. The right column basically describes the laptop initial and final percentages and thus the percentage change in the laptop batteries. But we don't need to measure the temperature because a laptop like this shouldn't get extremely hot well, during the charging process. So basically we will monitor this tool and we just fill in the blanks as the laptop charges and the power bank discharges. So back to the experiment. Hey everyone, it's around 9 a.m. now, so it's pretty early. And I have the Dell charger and the power bank. Charger USB-C to the power bank. The monitor showing the ambient temperature sandwiched between the power bank. Okay, I'm just gonna connect the charger. And in three, two, one. Okay. Now the power bank is charging and let's record the temperature as the time passes and the power bank charges up. So after exactly 2 hours 30 minutes which is basically around 150 minutes, I've tabulated a spreadsheet and I'm gonna show it up on the screen. Maximum temperature is around 35.6 degrees. Power bank didn't really heat up that much, only around 7 to 8 degrees above normal ambient temperature. Right, so I've drained the Lenovo battery almost completely to around 2% left. So now what I'm going to do is to disconnect the peripherals and just shut down the computer. So we will start our charging at the battery percentage of 2%. 3, 2, 1. Oops, there you go. You can see now it's finally charging. And let's quickly put the thermometer here so that we can measure the temperature during the discharging process. There you go. This is the battery temperature. And we'll see so after only around 26 minutes, the battery has dropped by 25% and the temperature is now hovering at around 40.1. A few moments later After 99 minutes, 59 seconds plus 56 minutes, 20 seconds You can see that the power bank is now at 6% And let's check the percentage of the battery You can see here is 100% So it's fully charged So I'm going to fill in the table And there you go Let me show you the capacity here To really validate it's actually 100% and it is. So the percentage change for the laptop is around 98%, whereas for the power bank is 94%. The graph that you see on the screen is the discharge temperature of the battery with respect to time. The maximum temperature I got was around 40.2 degrees Celsius. 98% laptop battery equals to 94% power bank battery. 1% of power bank battery 98 divided by 94 because we want to find 1% of power bank which is around 1 plus percentage of the laptop battery times the relative capacity times 1% which is 0.01 and with that around 0 0.79109 just put 5 significant figure first because we want to find 100% so 100% power bank battery basically around 79.111 hour with the two decimal place rounding so you can see that the power bank battery is 79.111 hours and some people might jump into conclusion like hey this is not good because the capacity is claims is 30,000 111,000 milliwatt hour we use the prefixes in this if we have milliamp hour, we use milliwatt hour. So this means that 30 amp hour times 3.7 volts equals to 111 watt hour. No prefix, we just copy and paste. So this means that 
What's the difference? Well, the difference that you are looking for is called efficiency conversion loss. Batteries go to circuit in the power bank, then computer charging battery at 16.8 volts because this is a 4 cell. So at the first stage, we have the battery efficiency loss, which in this case is included in the form of ESR, known as equivalent series resistance. Batteries have a ESR of less than 10 milli ohms. But even with this small internal resistance with large amount of currents, you will have a lot of power loss. In this case, the minimum current at 65 watt equals to 65 watt divided by 4.2 15 ampere 15.48 ampere um, I, i'm thinking that the actual current is around 20 ampere and because power loss equals to i square r we know that the r is 10 milliohms but 20 square is 400 then that would contribute to a lot of power loss. Efficiency with respect to the actual battery capacity, 79.11 divided by the 111, the claim battery capacity, and we get an average efficiency of around 71.27% or around 71.3%. Not that shabby, right? 71.3%, which includes every conversion loss. This power bank can fully charge a laptop up to 100% without a problem. This is pretty good. So I hope you enjoyed my review, my review take on the power bank. The link where you can get the power bank for yourself is in the description below. So do check it out. And remember to press the red subscribe button. We'll see you in the next time for more new and cool content.